G'day, in this episode of Start Your Own Battle, that's what we're really going to try and do, is start a battle for this bloke here. We're far north Queensland in about 40 metres of water, 50 odd, actually 50 metres of water looking at the centre there now, and we're going to try and catch what we call a Queensland Red. So that could be a, a Red Emperor or a largemouth nanogai, both fantastic eating fish. Probably the two quality table fish, but I tell you, fighting qualities are fantastic. Eating qualities are even better, so uh, lots of fun to catch, there's no doubt about that. You haven't caught one before? Never caught one. Red emperor or a largemouth? Only the red snapper. The red snapper? What's a red snapper? That's uh, down south. Oh, the su well, our southern snapper. So we're a long way from home, you and I, but um, a couple of different rigs that you can use. So just show me what, uh, spin yours around there. So standard type of paternoster rig, you could just tie, uh, tie a loop in your leader, but um, we've got a three-way swivel and a Tenno chemically sharpened hook sitting off there, and that's a conventional style dropper rig. So a little bit of flow here, a little bit of current. That sinker will sit on the bottom, and then that bait, and we'll go through the baits in a minute, it'll waft around in the current. So that's Dom's rig, you hang on to that. Me sorted. Mine's sitting over here, a little bit different. So I've got, um, I've got a big sinker that I'm gonna feed that down with, down to the bottom, and then have that bait wafting around, and I've got two Tenno's in a snooted situation there. So uh, we've got some slab baits and some squid, so that'll, that'll sit perfectly, those two tenos. Quite big hooks. If you're a snapper fishing at home, unless you're fishing for great big snapper, you probably generally don't go to a tenno. Um, but up here, they've got big mouths. You could even go bigger than a tenno again, 11 or a 12 -o. Uh, large mouth Nanagai's got a big mouth, as, as per the, the name of the fish. Red Emperor got quite a large mouth as well. So I've got that big barrel sinker to get down. Um, and uh, we've got some solid gear that we'll go through to, to handle it once we get the bite. All right, mate, time to drop and see what we can find. We've got a range of baits laid out here, cuttlefish, uh, small octopus or even big oco legs are great. Some slab baits, so this is Trevally. So slab baits are awesome and then whole squid as well. So we'll mix it up and see what they're actually going to feed on at the moment. But um, Dom's got the single hook rig, so we might even go with one of these big cuttlefish. So what I'll do is I'll just pin that and then pull that single tenno right through, through that tough part, and then back through the center right between the eyes there. And what I want to see is that hook exposed right down in amongst the candle and those, and those legs. So it's going to sit down in the current like that. Lots of hook exposure, ready for a red emperor or a largemouth nanogai. Well, I don't care which one it is, as long as it's one of them. As long as it's red. <laughs> yeah, to come up and eat that. You go and drop that down, and I'll get a slab bait rigged on this one. So drop no down over there. Here we go. So I've got the snood rig here, so I might go one of these slab baits. That's a piece of trevally. Once again, through, sorry, around the other way, through the skin first. So I'm just going to go through the skin there. So I want that bait to sit nice and straight. And have a look where that hook's going to come out. So if I lay that along there nice and straight, then I reckon the tip of, tip of the hook needs to go through where the eye is. So that's just where the tip of my thumb is. So I'll go through straight through there and expose that hook back out that way. And there you go, that's going to sit, sit on the bottom, wafting around like that. So I'm ready to go, I'm going to feed that down. Dom's already on the bottom, waiting for a bite, and uh, we'll see how we go. Red Emperor and Largemouth Nanagai tend to hang uh, just on little bits of a change in the bottom structure. This is going a little bit darker red there, so we're up on top of it now. I reckon they're Largemouth Nanagai, there could be a Red Emperor hanging around here somewhere, but it's just a change in the bottom. We're in 55 metres of water, so we're in what we call like a big open paddock. Um, the reefs are out wider here, shore's back in that way. So it's just those small changes, and that's the one thing that I learned coming up here fishing with guys who know a lot more about it uh, than I did. Uh, is, is looking for those small areas. So little bits when you're driving along, you see a colour change and a few fish marking there. That could be a really good place for a largemouth nanogai or a red emperor. Your hard, big reefy pinnacles hold lots of other reef fish like trout and, and, uh, and red throat emperor. But if you're chasing these largemouth nanogai and the red emperor, they tend to sit pretty hard on the bottom. Once you start fishing, they seem to come in and you go, wow, there's more fish on the sounder now. So, so don't be too miffed about that side of it. And that's certainly something that I learnt in my process coming up and fishing in this part of the world. You can see the colour change in the bottom there. So that's a bit of, bit of harder bottom there. That's probably sand. And then that's probably most likely largemouth nanogai sitting up above that. So it doesn't take much. We're not looking for great big pinnacles. Don't forget the peak bite times. Like most of these reef fish, they seem to bite hard onto those, uh, onto those tide changes, like any fish pretty well anywhere. So uh, lead up to the high tide's really good and in and around that low tide. Just need a bit of current flow, a bit of movement. So um, if you've got, got a fair bit of current, you might have to go up in that lead size. Don't forget to stay down in that paternoster style and that, that sort of floating that um, bait down with the ball sinker might not work if there's, if there's too much water flow. 
uh, lead up to the moon maybe you might find like most fish they bite a little bit better late in the afternoon and certainly into the night and red emperor one of those fish a famous fish to catch at night time um, the area that you're looking at it's a big open paddock there's not a lot of structure but the little bit of structure that there is will quite often hold the fish all right <laughs> That just loaded up, that it? did load up big time. <laughs> that bait just went down to the bottom. And you're away. So you're using a P5 to 8 or 50 to 80 pound um, regiment rod. And uh, Dom's giving it, oh, there's a bit of a bite there while I'm talking there. And I, oh, I missed my fish. He's given absolute grief. 65 pound braid and that 6,500 slammer four reel. It's got beautiful smooth drag on it. Down to some 80 pound leader and the setup that we showed you earlier. Oh, that was a bit of a bite too, Dom, that I just had. But Dom's working hard and you've got to work hard. Lots of sharks in this part of the world, so it's about getting that fish up as soon as you can and getting it away from the, the, the men in grey that are swimming around. And not too bad here as far as reefy structure goes. You're right, Dom, hang in there, big fella. Slippery when wet, mate. Not too, too bad. We're in like a big paddock area. So once you get them off the bottom, the structure's not too bad, but you're sort of racing the sharks, and that's what Dom's doing at the moment. I've got colour there. I'll put my rod down. And that looks, that looks pretty it looks damn red, good. Michael, yes. It looks red, looks red. All right, this is your first one ever, mate. I'll lift him up. <laughs> oh, look at that. Well, hey, congratulations. That's Thank your you. first largemouth. Get your hands in there. Not, oh, what I don't want to hold, so just be careful with those gill latches. Just in that gill plate's fine. Tuck your hands underneath there. Look at that. Whoa, Got hang him. on to him, Dom. And there's that Paternoster rig that we spoke about, that sinker, and that was a part of that slab bait there. That is fantastic. How's that feel? Mate, that's extraordinary. What a beautiful fish. Yeah, and no, it's red. That's a cracker. So that's a large mouth nana guy, a member of the Lejanet family. So the same family as Red Emperor, Mangrove Jack, uh, Finger Mark, all those sorts of fish are in that Lejanet family, even Red Bass a part of the Lejanet, but uh, fantastic eating fish. You see Barotrauma's done a little bit there too, blown his eyes out. Uh, better eating fish you won't find than a largemouth nana guy, so make sure when you come out you've got plenty of ice. Um, it's just a, a pointless exercise to try and release that fish in 50 metres of water. There's not a chance it's gonna, it's gonna just float off for, for the sharks to eat, so we wanna look after it. It's a beautiful white flesh, lots of ice. Bleed that fish, get it on the ice, and look after it. You can see why they're called largemouth nana guy. You've got that great big large mouth, and that's that single tenno cutting cutting point hook. So tenno, but uh, I know I've, I've got a mate up in North Queensland who chases them all the time, Adam, and he says, guesty quite often, if you've even got a bigger hook again, I go, wow, bigger than a tenno. So even 11 or 12 o hook is no problems with a mouth like that, but the tenno has certainly done the job there. So I have another look at the gear there, and I said that P5 to 8 or 50 to 80 pound um, jig rod, so that's one of the beautiful regiment black ops rods that we have and that uh, 65 pound braid uh, matches up perfectly and um, don't be afraid to go up even a bit heavier in the braid if you have to if you're fishing for some real big red emperor around the place but i gotta tell you mate that's got your battle started that's i reckon big started. <laughs> we might have a couple more drops michael guest and dominic thorny we'll catch you next time see ya